to have it's got to be a group of people and when God releases it floods the whole road presence of God on your role and the anointing will touch everybody that's near them. I dare you just to touch somebody around you and just tell them I hope it's you this morning. It, it ain't even got to be me. Long as I can reach out and feel what God is releasing, I know that thing will work for me. It ain't even got to be my day. I don't even have to be the one to get blessed. But if I can just fall in the overflow of whatever God is releasing, it'll be enough to change my life forever. Tell somebody you came on the right day. You came in the right hour. God is getting ready to do something. I need 10 people to shout hallelujah. Yeah, there's a time, there's a moment when God is doing something and he's releasing something and here's the key. You don't know when it is so you can't ever miss it. That's why we got to quit picking and choosing when we come to hear the word of God. Anytime the word is going forth, you, David said I was glad. Because it, it, it didn't have to be like this. You could have been born in Scandinavia somewhere. You could have been born in Czechoslovakia somewhere. You could have been born in China where you had to uh, sneak to get to the house of God and crawl in sewers. But you've been born in this declared independent state of the United States of America. And while you are country tis a vie and giving your salute to the flag, you better give your honor to Jesus. You better remember because he alone is the author and finisher of your faith. And we got to quit acting like we don't need him every day I need thee oh I need thee every hour I need thee I was going to sing it but the drummer ain't here so I, I didn't have to sing it he wasn't up here but, but every hour we need God but God has given us something and something that we need to move forward in and, and, and every now and then let me tell you something all you need sometimes is something declared in the right atmosphere if the right thing gets said in the right atmosphere it will change your life forever when God allows that thing somebody say my thing my thing when God allows that thing to reach its kairos yeah Janelle will receive proof of God's preference for our lives and his hand of manifestation remember remember 10 1 and Daniel told us that God's got a thing for you and the Bible told us that this thing was something revealed that this thing was true that the time was long because uh, he's teaching us patience and long suffering but they also said that Daniel understood the thing and he had understanding of the vision I thought it'd be on the screen but it ain't there the Lord spoke to us last week and he continued to confirm listen that we're in a special season that for those people who have made a dedicated decision this is important I'm going to say it slow that we want what God wants both for and out of our lives everybody wants what's for our lives but this is a special season for people who, who want what God wants out of our lives we're saying God I want you to get the glory out of my life I want to give you what's due your name I want to render what's right for me not just get what's right for me we're in a season for things somebody say things watch this to start maturing for the maturing You're going to begin to see things culminate as you begin to mature in Christ. People who are evolving and desiring to become what God has prescribed and ordained are going to begin to see things start working out. When we've made a decision to want to do things God's way, when we've made a decision to want to see things happen the way God has instructed for them that decision the first thing that starts happening to you is you start getting pruned 
whenever a flower shows potential, the first thing you got to do is clip it. Look at your neighbor and say, clip it, clip it, clip it. The first, the first, the first thing that I learned by being a, a, a part owner of, of, a, of a beauty salon is that if you're going to see good growth, you got to clip split ends. And so everything in your life that's been split, <laughs> it's got to be disconnected from the stuff that's trying to grow. And so God is saying that if you're going to walk in what I've ordained, we've got to begin to clip. We've got to begin to shave around the rough edges. We've got to begin to get some things uh, dislodged from our lives. And normally that's the part where we begin to resist the move of God. But people who will allow this process to continue will begin to experience at a greater capacity, intensity, and rapidity. You'll begin to see things happen uh, with exponential growth, and you'll begin to see the budding and the fruitfulness of prophetic promises of God beginning to come to pass in your life. But not only that, you'll begin to see God's glory uh, overtake you as you live patiently and with the right attitude and expectation. In other words, uh, folk that can sense the rain people that can sense the magnificent uh, uh, yeah, the, the, those that can sense the incredible and watch this and those that understand the right kind of praise about it yeah when you know how to praise about it uh, it, it will strengthen your angels ambush your enemy and shift your dry season yeah. when you know how to give God the right type of praise and so when you think about the stuff that you're going through, when you're thinking about what you need God to do for you, I dare you to take about two minutes and shout about him. I dare you. I dare you to give God some praise. I, I dare you to shout about what you've been waiting on. <laughs> I dare you to shout about what you've been crying out about. I dare you to shout about what the enemy's been resisting. I dare 10 of y'all to shout about what you messed up. I dare you to shout about it right now. I dare you to shout about it. God's going to fix what you messed up. I dare you to shout about what you were about to decide to give up on. Some of you had thrown in the towel. Come on. It's three of you that thrown in the towel. I dare you to give it one more shout. I dare you to give it one. I get it, but I'm just going to listen. I'm going to give it one more shout. One more shout. Come on. Now, holla, hallelujah. God, 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 God inhabits the praises of his people. Now, I, I, I could have left you there because I know it'll start in the flesh, but it'll end in the spirit. I could have, I could have left you right there and a couple of more people would have shouted But I believe the Lord wants to say something So I didn't go any further with it But you needed to tell somebody I'm going to shout it out I'm going to shout I'm going to shout it out That thing that I've been waiting on That thing that I've been How many of you have been crying about something you, How many of you know the enemy's been resisted you hard about something and, and God is telling you today That in your shout you shall see your deliverance Many people let go of the prophetic promise of God because you messed up along the way. You're going to have to shout about that too. I, and I will not give up. And with all of that going on and with all that shouting, I feel like shouting some more, but I'm going to keep preaching. Now, with all that going on, it's the year of maturing and we are inside now of the second half. And I'm so thankful for my experiences with God. We were sitting at the game yesterday, and it was pitiful. We were down 17. And it just looked pitiful. The little poor, poor owner come over to me. He was like, this ain't working out. And I remember what I said last Sunday. And I said, well, don't worry about it. I ain't gonna lie, I have my fingers crossed. <laughs> I said, see, Max got a plan. He's watching. He's watching them and he's watching his team. And sometimes 
it's not until we're under the panic of losing that we'll pay. <laughs> because when we begin to size up our enemy sometimes we, we start off real cocky like we don't need the strategy of the is we're supposed to do like we don't need the Holy Ghost like we think that we got things under control we don't pray about them in the morning and then if you get real spiritual and grown up you You don't even ask for God's uh, attention. You don't ask for his instruction. You just say, God, I'm going to do this. I'm going to name it, claim it. I'm going to bab it, glab it, and then I'm gone. Rather than asking God what he wants out of our lives. But there's something about getting ready to lose that'll make you begin to draw attention again to the voice of reason to, to the one and, and, I, and I, I just thought about the fact that these guys were going to be looking to him for direction fresh energy comes when you have confidence in the voice of the Holy Ghost that's why many of us we, we've got relationship with God and we've got some, some homage that we give to Jesus but we failed in growing closer to the Holy Ghost and when you're not near your Bible or in church, you need a voice that will move you and guide you, that you're confident in, even when your back is up against the wall. So the second half was differently. It was different, obviously, because we're in the championship game. You a different strategy uh, being exercised. Uh, the coach or the owner said one of the problems was that these guys had been skipping practice. Some of you have been skipping practice and your first half hadn't been like you thought it would be. Uh, but I'm thankful that you came to the locker room this morning. And God's going to say something to you that's going to help you have a better second half. And, and, and God, God is doing something, I, and I'm going to keep saying, for those who are maturing, say maturing. All right, my shout is out, my teaching is in. For those who have surrendered their pacifiers and their pampers. Those who are tired of being babied in the Holy Ghost. Those who don't mind milk but are beginning to be ready for strong meat. Folk that want a fresh revelation of God's goodness, his love. People who want to hear what it is that God has planned for their lives and are ready now with the power of the Holy Spirit to take the tough terrain so they can get to the place where God has called for them uh, to get to, the place called there people who desire open vision say open vision people who want to see God show them the next steps of their lives and up on the tower to see what God would say uh, there's a place that you've got to get up to in order to clearly hear the word of God and it's hard to climb upward with too many things holding you down uh, we've got to become a people who are more loosed and able to go up to the mountain in, in worship, up to the mountain in prayer, up to the mountain in praise so that we can see what it is that God is saying to us. We can't hold on to a whole bunch of baggage. And listen, sometimes baggage are your own aspirations. Dreams you causing yourself to dream. Things that you want to see happen for your life. Uh, slap three people and say kick over your bucket list kick over your bucket list you don't need no freaking bucket list you need the will of God uh, you don't need to have accomplished something before you die you just need to keep serving Jesus uh, the problem with most of us is we're working too hard to do things that we want to enjoy rather than worshiping him hard going after him hard so that we can enjoy the worship people who know how to remain properly postured in uncomfortable circumstances that's, that's normally one of the prerequisites for an uncomfortable circumstance where either our minds our bodies, our money our emotions aren't in its most comfortable position 
but our faithfulness has kept us tucked in the right posture so that God can reveal a thing to us that will not only change our lives, but change the lives of those that are around us. Now, this isn't real deep, but, but it, it is a revelation that I think out of it, the principles will bless us as we move forward uh, in the next steps of our journey. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1, I'm going to read it in the King James. It said, now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day, uh, as I was among the captives by the river Kabar, that the heavens were open and I saw visions of God. Remember last week I told you the prophets would sit by the river and the heavens would open up. And it, there's a lot of stuff in here that I can't go into for the sake of time. Like 30th year is the year of maturity. It, it, it's the year of transition of the priesthood. In the fourth month, it means something's being created new in our lives. The fifth day, five, is the number of grace. And so just in the beginning of a specificity of time, we see that there's a new created grace in their priesthood. God is saying that I was that, but it was that time, but while it was that time, I was among the captives by the river Kabar that the heavens were open and saw visions of God. It wasn't until he was captive. See, sometimes when you're not living captive, God can't speak to you because we live with too many options and distractions. But when God has us captive, when, when God audience when God has your full attention somebody say I'm, a, I'm at attention I'm at attention because if we would do it humbly then we would not need some of the experiences that we've had but the text suggests that while he was experiencing rough conditions captive that means that he was being stripped and he was exiled the Bible goes on in another verse to tell us he was the son of boozy uh, this word son of means appointed to boozy means contempt or disdain or disapproval or disrespect or even scorn so this man uh, Ezekiel he was a man who was stripped and exiled and appointed to contempt and scorn he was the son of boozy and the Bible says that in the midst of his condition he stayed connected to God the Bible says that in this specific moment, this kairos of time, the Bible says he was by the river. He was in the right atmosphere. By the river is an indication of the flow of his spirit. It's an indication of a place of flooding or overflow of the anointing. He was in an assembly. That, that word means the place of prosperity and favor. Isn't it funny how God will let you look captive, but you actually in your place of favor? I'm speaking to somebody today who was wondering why God had forgotten about him. He hadn't forgotten about you. He just put you in the right place. Now, because favor doesn't come to your flesh. It comes to your eyes. God's getting ready to give you a vision. God's getting ready to show you what's next. And the problem is we can't follow nothing that we haven't already seen. So God hadn't put you in a tight place to hurt you. He's put you in a tight place to speak to you. God's getting ready to open up heaven over you. He's got your hands and your feet tied. If he's got your money tied God's getting ready to give you a vision about your finances he got your emotions tied. so even if he's got your life tied God's getting ready to open up something that you can see the next steps David said order my steps in your word David said it wasn't until I was afflicted that I began to have respect unto your law it isn't until you're in a tight place and an uncomfortable circumstance that God has your full attention can open heaven over you look at your neighbor and say it's tight but it's right God's getting ready to release something into your life that's going to change your life forever it's not going to fancy your flesh it might not fill up your pocket for whatever it is that God has for me somebody shout hallelujah God wants to speak to your spirit man he wants to awaken the real you. Somebody say the real me now, stand up. God wants to speak to the real you. Spirit, we have been made a quickened spirit. God wants to speak to that which he has awakened. That which needs this tight place. He was actually in the place of favor. He was in a shift getting ready to prosper. His good success was starting while he was captive. Who he was was being released while he was incarcerated. 
While while something seemed to have him bound, he was receiving his liberation. God doesn't do things the way we do it. It's called the paradox of our faith. Because if you want to go up, you must first go down. If you want to reap, you must first sow. And everybody that prayed for the power of the resurrection, you got to first die. And so God is teaching us that in order to be free, you got to first be bound. You've got to be caught up in him. You've got to be where he wants you to be. And sometimes where God sends you to receive your deliverance is an uncomfortable condition. If he's Jehovah Rapha, there's got to be affliction somewhere. I've got to be sick somewhere. If I'm going to know him as a healer, don't worry about your sickness today. Don't worry about your disease today. He is Jehovah Rapha. He has come to deliver you. And it took your testimony for somebody else to believe him. Shout hallelujah. We ask God to use us. Ezekiel came as a priest. But he's getting ready to change. The Bible says that he was by the river, but not just any river. He was by the river Kabar. This river Kabar is a place of unity. Uh Uh-oh. The word Kabar actually means to have fellowship with. It, It means a compacted place. See, that's why he didn't say uh, that he was captive by himself. Uh, The Bible goes on to talk about they were captive. See, because if you don't believe that what God is doing for your life has come to help bless somebody else, you're going to miss what God is doing. Because this thing ain't about you reaching some grandiose place. This is about you being used as a cup to overflow into somebody else's life. And let me help you. You don't get to choose who it is. Uh, I'm going to talk. Can I just talk like I talk? Uh, It might be that heifer across the room. Uh, It might be that nigga down the hall. Uh, It it might be that SOB that I don't want to see no more. But God has come so that whatever he's going to do in your life is going to bless some of the lives that you already can't stand. So I want the people around us to be blessed. Yeah, I know. We shouldn't think like that coming into the house, but just in here. I like to be transparent. <laughs> he shouldn't talk like that at the church. You shouldn't talk like that at your house. If you can say it at your house, I can say it at the church. It's either holy or it ain't holy. But sometimes you don't understand it until it's rough. We used to say, Mama, you ain't got to say it like that. She said, oh, but you heard me this time, though, didn't you? Uh Uh-huh. I had to act like I was going to bust you upside your head. I got to talk like I'm crazy for you to pay me attention. Slap three people and say, you know what it is. You know what it is. How forcible are right words. <laughs> yeah, he, he said, but we were by, watch this, 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 this right here blessed me. It ain't deep, but it blessed me last night. He said, he was by uh, the river called Kabar, uh, this place of you, this compacted place. And you know, number 16, that uh, every joint supplieth. And every joint has come called for there to be a compacted body. That's why, that's why I need your anointing. That's, that's why I need your gift. I, I need what's coming out of your life. Listen, if you didn't feel like coming to church because you didn't have nothing to get, come for me because there's something about being connected to who God has called me to be connected to. It'll cause me to miss my next appointment with my destiny. So if you don't want to show up for you, show up for me. I done cried too many tears. I I done choked on my snot. I done asked God, why has he forsaken me? And to finally be here and the connecting piece was you and in your selfishness, you decided that you ain't on it this morning. How dare you keep me from what God's got for me? 
Sometimes you come because somebody else who made you think that less of yourself that you wouldn't come and add to the people that need you. Compacted. Kabar means to be unified. To be in fellowship with. That's why some of us are missing our open vision. Because you're not connected spiritually to the house or somewhere where God can speak. God wants to speak. God, God, God's intention, but the Bible says, God said, and let there be light. Watch this. And the next verse says, and there was light. <laughs> if you read it in the Hebrew, it says, God said it now, and it already was. So it happened so quick that by the time God... I know it didn't. There it go. But I think it's going to go off. It's red. Hallelujah. Looking for a mic. God, God wants to speak to us now like he, he... Hallelujah. And so he wants us to be in the proper posture. He wants us to have the right mindset because he wants to do for us exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. There's something that God has prescribed for us and watch this, it's in his mouth. Faith cometh by and hearing by the word. The Bible is in his mouth. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by by the of God there's something that God's trying to say to you to get you in your next position of glory God's not going to just move you he's going to speak you from faith to faith he's going to speak you from, from glory to glory there's something that tell somebody God wants to speak to me that's why you've got to get rid of the noise some pestilence that's why you got to get folk from around your head that's why you got to get people from around your ears that's why you got to get folk out of your sight David said I'll put no wicked thing before my eyes because it made me take my ears off Jesus something God wants to say and watch this and he doesn't just want you to hear it but he wants your hearing to cause you to see it the Bible says that he went up on the tower to see what the Lord was going to say So at this river Kabar, in an uncomfortable position, the priest received open vision. Now watch this. When you take the time tonight to read a little further, you'll find out in verse 3 that the priest evolved This is important because this transition meant that now he went from speaking to God on behalf of the people to speaking to the people on behalf of God. He went from crying out to God concerning what the people wanted to crying out to the people concerning what God wanted. And when you're in a tight place, God don't need to hear what you want. You need to hear what he wants because now every move is vital. Everything you do could cause something else to break when you're in a tight position. And the Bible says, 
that the word came, watch this, expressly. First of all, I want to prophesy that you're in a season now. How many of you have been praying? How many of you have been waiting? How many of you have been needing manifestation? Well, listen, I promise you with everything on the inside of me, God told me to say it and do it just like this. I am raising my right hand and I am stretching it to you and I am telling you that it will speak back to you. I, I, I promise you. Some of you, God gave me a vision. Some of you been on the line talking to God and kept saying, hello, hello. You heard anything back. You, you sense his love. You, 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 you're believing that he hears you. you you're, you're, you're contemplating the words that you've heard from the bishop and the other ministers that, that God listens to your prayers. But I'm prophesying that this is the season that God's getting ready to speak back to you and you're going to hear the voice of God and you're going to know it's God and what God tells you to do, somebody say do it. This is what Mary told the men at the wedding feast at the first uh, miracle. She said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And we saw a transition that we saw water turn into wine. We saw that things transition and the wine at the end was better than the wine that was at the beginning. I come to prophesy to tell somebody that's trying to get back to where God had you before. You don't want to get back to where God had you before. You want the new wine. You want this thing better at the end than it was in the beginning. You just need God to speak to you. Somebody shout speak to me. The Bible said expressly. The word expressly means that while God is saying it, it's coming to pass. So as a priest, he went crying to God with no results. But as a prophet, before he could finish, God was already doing what he was having him to say. There is healing that's taking place in this house right now because God is speaking expressly. Somebody's life is changing right now. Come on, I'm prophesying to you. Your bad report just became your testimony right now in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what the bank said. God's getting ready to pay it right now. God's getting ready to do it. Why? Because today he's speaking expressly in the midst of all your sorrow joy is about to overtake you in the midst of all your bitterness forgiveness is about to overtake you in the midst of your turmoil peace is about to overtake you because God is speaking expressly this word literally means Watch this. To breathe into existence. God was saying that I'm opening my mouth and the very breath of my mouth is changing your situation. We go to God in prayer when we need to just go to God in worship. Because once we go to God in worship, he'll tell us what to pray. He'll tell us how to feel. He'll show us what to believe. He'll give us the tools we need to get through the next day. John said, I pray that your everyday affairs will prosper. Somebody in here needs to know that God cares about your everyday affairs. He cares about your relationships. He cares about your children. He cares about your home. He cares about your finances. He cares about your life and your body. God cares about your everyday affairs. And sometimes in order for us to get God's best, something's got to be removed. That's what's hard for us to deal with. Is that in order for there to be multiplication, sometimes there first has to be subtraction. But God is breathing. Somebody say he's breathing. Romans 8, 31 through 34 in the Message Bible says, so what, so what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing, watch this, our condition, 
and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? And who would dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's preferred, one of his chosen? Who would dare even to point a finger? The one who died for us, who was raised to life for us, is in the presence of God at this very moment. Watch this, sticking Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be much longer, but I do want to repeat to you that he has promised that he was going to help us. Just go ahead and clap right there. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> but he doesn't just want to help us. <clears throat> he wants to empower and enable us to participate in the supernatural with him. <clears throat> and remember, there are some things that God wants to do for us in order for that to happen. Number one, he wants to chase out our enemies. <clears throat> and he wants us to defeat them In other words, let me, let me help some of y'all. He wants you to help them whoop their enemy. I grew, I grew up in the view. That's where I grew up. And we would be outside playing and we'd hear somebody holler. And we'd take off and we used to have to be careful because we would run straight across Philadelphia Drive or down Earlham. We wouldn't even look. We would just run straight. We would just run straight down there. Me, Jeff Arnold, uh, I mean, uh, Jeff Evans and the rest of We would just take off. And when we got to the other side and somebody was fighting, <clears throat> one of the big boys in the neighborhood, when we get over there, it didn't even matter if the person they was fighting was on the ground. If you showed up, Daryl say, now kick him. And if you didn't kick him too, you was going to be in trouble with Big Daryl. Which means when Big Daryl come riding down the street on the bike, you was either going to have to fight Big Daryl or go in the house. And so we would all check with each other when we see Big Daryl come and say, did you kick that dude at the last fight? Because Big Daryl said that don't nobody mess with nobody in the view. And if you come into view, and, and it's funny because he would always be upset with somebody in the bass. <laughs> Big Daryl gone on to be with the Lord, but if he knew I was preaching at the bass, I'd have to run from Big Daryl right now. <laughs> Big Daryl like that boy on Fridays. You know, he come around on the bike, Debo. Every time I see Debo, I think about Big Daryl. I'm like, here come Big Daryl. Hold my, put my chain in. But Big Daryl said, you don't let nobody come in your territory and bother folk that belong to the same neighborhood that you belong to. And every now and then, there's beef inside the neighborhood. But even with the beef inside the neighborhood, what nobody from outside the neighborhood allowed to come mess with the neighborhood. And, I'm, and, I'm, and, and all I'm saying is, I, I, I learned how to fight, but I also learned how to kick people. And they would always want me to kick because I knew karate. And he would call me Lil McGuire, Lil McGuire, kick him again. Kick him like Bruce Lee. And so it would be people that would remember me because he done said my name. So when we got older, folks be like, man, I remember when you kicked me. But the point was that whenever we found an enemy, everybody kicked him. And the problem with the church is sometimes in our spiritual haterism, we actually hope some people on the other side of the aisle get defeated by their enemy. But what you don't realize is that if one enemy comes in and defeats one of you, they're going to bring seven more enemies and they're going to begin to take over the entire neighborhood. All they need to know is that you won't help each other. So God is strengthening us 
to chase out and defeat our enemies in unity. Just stand up and look at somebody on the other side and say, I got your back, I got your back. The enemy knows the only people you're going to help is the people you sit with. The enemy done already figured out the only people you're helping is the people you sit next to. But if he ever thought you come across that aisle to protect somebody in your neighborhood, the enemy wouldn't mess with half the people that he's messing with. Here's what's going to fix it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Every Sunday, you ought to look across the aisle and find somebody you don't know. Before you leave church, you ought to ask them their name. And, be, and when you go home now, all week long, you're praying for somebody that sits on the other side of the aisle. That's how we defeat the enemy. You're praying for them four people you know. You can spend less time praying for me and pray for one of my other children. <laughs> I had to be careful with y'all praying for me anyway. Some of y'all are so spiritual, you keeping me in bondage. Lord, keep him humble, Jesus. You don't know what you just did to me. This affliction after affliction. This trial after trial. You talking about keep him humble. Lord, teach him a new lesson, Jesus. Lord, teach him to trust you. You're keeping me jacked up. My whole life is no money, a new, new experience, new tragedy. And watch this, and it ain't even the devil, it's the saints. Because you got power in your mouth. If you're going to lift me up in prayer, thank him. Thank him. I thank you for his humility, Jesus. I thank you for blessing him, Jesus. I thank you how he's learning, Jesus. I thank you how he's growing. Don't ask him to keep me nowhere except for from sin. And if somebody put on Facebook what my sin is, then just chase my enemy out the sanctuary. Because you know y'all do share stuff on Facebook. I told somebody the other day, I was just going to mess up the whole church and the city. I, every week I was going to pick a club and just go in there and sit. <laughs> Order me a ginger ale and just sit right there for an hour. Just sit right there for an hour. And then somebody said, yeah, but they ain't going to come back to the club no more. I said, nah, uh, they ain't going to come back to church no more. <laughs> Negroes ain't leaving the club. Shoot. You're going to church in the morning? I hope so. <laughs> Who preaching? Bishop? Oh, Lord. We get there about 1230. <laughs> we'll catch the prayer. <laughs> hey, girl, he can pray. <laughs> you ain't got to hear him preach. He's going to pray what he preached. The next thing that he said he was going to give us was, watch this, in a combination this is what I love about Jesus. That last time I had some Chinese, I thought about it because everything was in a combination. And I said, God, that's how you come. You come in a combination. That's why you're more than we expect. You don't just come uh, a la carte. You come packed in a combination. He said, I'm going to come and give you presence, favor, increase, and protection. It's not just going to be my presence because when you got my presence, you get my favor. And whenever you got my favor, there's going to be increase. And if I know I just gave you favor and increase, I know I got to protect it. God giving us a combination. The other thing that God said is he wanted to bring us exponential and expeditious harvest. Remember, you got seeds in the ground. Watch this. Some of you got seeds in the ground that you done forgot about. But a seed sown is a seed. Remember, God will never forget the seeds that you've sown. It just has to be the right season for it to come to pass. You've got to be patient and wait on the right season. 
God promised us that he wouldn't be ashamed to be our God. I don't know about you, but there's been some things that I've done that I'm sure some people are ashamed to be my friend. They're ashamed to be a part of the church. But we have to deal with that. We have to be honest about that. We're in the elders meeting. Bishop, why, why, why are we, we listening and they, we ain't hearing it? Like, why, why? I made some mistakes. Everybody ain't left because they crazy. Some folk left because I was crazy. And they have a right to be ashamed. I ain't mad at them. They human. But oh, how wonderful and thankful I am that as crazy as I've been, that God said he would not be ashamed to be my God. When folk don't want to be my friend, he's still going to be my God. When family don't want to be your family, he still wants to be my God. And even though that ain't pretty on that end, I'm so thankful that there's nothing I can do that would make him be ashamed of being my God. The only thing that will cause him to be ashamed of me is if I'm ashamed of him. And I tell you one thing, that ain't going Sometimes you just got to be honest with yourself. You ran the people off. You jacked up the relationship. Things would have been better if you would have been better. Stuff ain't changing because you ain't changing. You not lining up with the word of God. You not doing what God wants to do, but you want God to hear your prayers. If you would just do what God said, everything would click into place. But I'm thankful that even in the midst of that, he's not ashamed to be my God. Waiting on me to conform, he's still not ashamed. I needed that this morning. Some of you don't need, I needed that this morning. I needed to know that every promise that God had for me, he's not ashamed to bring it to pass on my behalf. He's not ashamed to say, this one belongs to me. I mean, we used to get trouble in school and the parents would come up there and you would see the parents just sitting there shaking their head. My mother would come in right away. She'd just blow the whole secret to everything. Mark Cameron! Yeah, that's mine right there. Come here, come here. <laughs> and I used to say, why would you always embarrass me like that? She said, I ain't embarrassing you. I'm letting everybody know you. And I thought about it as I got older. Sometimes certain things didn't happen to me because they were scared of her. <laughs> With God not being ashamed of you, there's some stuff the devil don't get to do to you because he ain't getting ready to mess with God. And so God not being ashamed of you just got you out of a whole lot more trouble than you was already going to be. And the enemy had another diabolical plan. The enemy had another scheme. He had another plot up his sleeve. But the moment he saw Jesus step up for you, he knew he had to back up. Look at your neighbor and say, uh-huh, I'm with him. Yeah, God done got you out of so much trouble. You don't even know what was coming. I like, I like the senior's prayer. Lord, I thank you for seen and unseen dangers. I put that in my prayer the first time I heard it. For what I don't know, I thank you. For what I never experienced, I thank you. For what I didn't know was planned for me, I thank you. For what I didn't even see how the, de the devil missed me when you ducked my head and made me bump my head. I got mad about bumping my head, but I didn't know you was moving me from the blow that was coming from the back. God, I thank you. Quit complaining about what's in front of you because you don't know what it protected what was from what was behind you. The Bible says he's my real reward. Then the Bible said that we would be in that same prophetic statement. It said we would be liberated from what the devil used to saddle and burden our lives in order to stifle us from having good success. A few weeks ago, we talked about prohibitions of your own potential. We used Isaiah 54 and 12, and we said, think big. We also talked about history and your lack of confidence and anxieties and trepidations, all fears and doubts and worries. 
Uh, but I, I need to make this statement because as we shift, as we go from priest to prophetic, as we as we begin to not only take God our cries, but then but cry out to the people from God, as we begin to speak to our own lives, if we begin to prophesy to our own dead bones, as we begin to move into certain valleys that God wants us to move in, so that we can begin to speak life to things in our own lives and in the lives of others. I need you to understand once again. I know somebody's gonna say, well, it's because it keeps coming up, and I. Can't can't get past it that you're going to have to be very particular about the people in your life this season now wait a minute bishop you said love everybody across the aisle and look I, i'm not i'm not reclining off of that i'm not coming back off of that i'm just simply saying everybody though doesn't get to speak into your life while while you're congenial enough that everybody can speak to you everybody can't speak into you the shift in our lives and the increase or decrease of the anointed impact in and through our lives can usually be connected in a time frame to an individual that comes in our lives. Watch this. People that bring fresh vision. People that bring fresh air. Somebody say a new aroma. People that bring new attitudes and a different swag to our lives. The strength, wisdom, and anointing and grace that God wants to be flowing through our life. We, some of us just need a new swag which is our walk just needs to change. We, we need to go from the spiritual limping to having a fresh and a solid walk in Christ because we've got new joy, we've got new knowledge and that the grace of God is flowing and the anointing. We need to sit down by the river. Sometimes the shift not only will bring people in, but the shift will help reveal those that need to go. And some people might not totally move out of your life, but they will lose the level of influence that, and significance that you've allowed them to have. Some things have stifled our progression, our behavior, and, and our ultimate evolvement. I told you last week that it's time for us to let God reorganize some of our current relationships uh, and, and do something with individuals who are in our lives, but we need to put them in proper perspective because God wants to use them to help connect us to purpose and our pathways to destiny. Uh, and, 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 and a good friend, remember I told you, they said it's time to be an asset than just an assignment. Uh, we, we need to find people who watch this, who add more value to God's design trek for our lives and not make us more vulnerable to the enemy's diabolical tricks for our lives. People that's going to push me in my trek but not take me into a trick. I've, I've got to be careful because I've got folk that don't understand what's next for my life and they want you to live your life the way they're living theirs. We, 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 this ain't the season where I'm just getting in the car and we just riding. This ain't, this ain't that season. This ain't the season where we just go have a drink. This ain't, this ain't that season. I need to go have a prayer. This is the season where we take an old habit and replace it with a new habit in the kingdom. And I'm not talking about being perfect. I'm not even talking about being boring. I'm not even talking about being nerdy. I'm just talking about being different. Because what I used to do isn't getting me the results that I know I need in this season. And some of us try to over-spiritualize ourselves thinking we can get back faster than we really can. Because if that was the case, you wouldn't have to get back, you'd already be back. So in order to get back, I've got to do something differently in this season. And I'll end right here. And God didn't rescue us and redeem us so that we could be idle. The season where God wants us to be active, season where God wants us to be prayerful and worshipful and full of the word and full of the work of Christ. God has strategically designed individuals uh, and he's arranged us properly as a piece of a majestic and operative puzzle that will display, I told you before, a perfect portrait and move us as a synchronized masterpiece of God's intelligence and his intention. You are the magnum opus of his power and his plan. You, you are God's greatest masterpiece. There's something masterful that God has ordained that we accomplish. 
God wants to resource us. He wants to restore us. He wants to refresh us. And he wants, us to he wants to relaunch us for work and for the life he died and rose again from the dead to bless us to enjoy. Somebody say power. God wants to give us power. He wants our lives to be the release of the sweet aroma of power. Prosperity. Order. Worship. Excellence. And righteousness. Say power. And he's going to do it with fresh gas, grace, anointing, sanctification, power with fresh gas. God is releasing prosperity, order, worship, excellence, and righteousness. I told you Wednesday, God, God told me to, that, that this is the season that I didn't need that power, but I needed his power. And I, and I got what God was saying. There was just there's a, there needs to be a fresh expectation from God. And I'm prophesying that God's getting ready to speak back to you. That there's getting ready to be open vision over your life. And God wants to release it through grace, anointing, and sanctification. And sometimes sanctification isn't a fun process. Because there's a scrubbing, there's a scourging that comes sometimes with sanctification. There's a purging and a pruning that comes with sanctification. There's, there's some revealing of parts of our flesh that, that comes with sanctification. And sometimes it comes with a, a level of private humiliation. Because uh, humility comes before honor. And whenever God's getting ready to honor us, there, there's sometimes... Just dabs of private humiliation where you, you, you get to see that you ain't all of that. That you get to see there's another part of your life that you need to give to God right now before you mess your whole stuff up. It'll almost for a moment make you paranoid because it'll almost seem like somebody else knows. I'm, I'm, it's, it's wonderful how God will remind me of the need to have the right type of life because sometimes when God reveals something to you, you'll walk in the sanctuary and people will look at you funny for no reason, but you'll think that God done told them something. And then you got to be careful because in a prophetic atmosphere, he might have. Faithful people would know so they can pray. So the sanctification process isn't always fun, but it's necessary because I'm telling you, the thing that God has for you, you can't get it the way you are right now. There's some place that God has to take you internally so that you can happen what he's getting ready to externally bring to your life. The anointing on your life is so that other people can be touched by what God wants to do. The grace on your life is because God has to fill in the blanks. Even though you would want to, you can't. And that's why we have God's grace. Grace isn't because you've been good. Grace is because you're not good enough. But thank God for his grace. And so say it with me. Prosperity. Order. Wisdom. Excellence. And righteousness. God wants to give us this power for this next season. That your steps will be correct. Job said, get back to God. And he will rebuild your life. And somebody will say, well, Bishop, I haven't missed church in months. Well, I'm not telling you to get back to church. I'm saying get a place in your life back to God. There's always a place in your life that needs to get back to God. You can be full of holiness but still walking in fear. You can be full of fear and walking in holiness. But the point is, there's something that needs more of God. Give it back to him. Some of you just need to know that God's ready to do something for you. If you're not a, if you want that process, no, no, let me go back. We all want it. If we know we need that process from God. Because when God speaks and it begins to happen, God has to posture us correctly. Remember, right away, even though he began to do something for the children of Israel, they didn't leave Babylon right away. 
They stayed captive for a little while. If you read the book of Jeremiah and everybody shouts about verse 11 in chapter 29, when he says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of harm for an expected end, that I've got a future and a hope. He said, hey, listen, y'all ain't leaving for 70 years. I don't even know what that felt like to somebody that was 70, somebody that was 80, somebody that was 50, that was 40, that was 30, somebody born. He said, you ain't leaving for 70 years. But in the midst of it, he said, but you're going to have houses that you didn't build, land that you didn't own. Some of us may not see all of our promises come to pass, but the promise isn't for you, it's for your children. David wasn't allowed to build the temple, but God allowed him to bring all the resources that Solomon used to build the temple. But that's what brought him joy, that knowing that he was in the will of God. But what if God says something today and it happened tonight? What if God said something this morning and by the time you got home, it had changed? What, what if you came in here discombobulated and you leave totally assembled? What if you came sick and you leave healed? What if it don't take 70 years? What if it took 70 minutes and God's getting ready to change your life forever? If all you have to do is go through the process of being sanctified, for that to possibly take place in your life and you're okay with that I dare you to stand or come to this altar you can do either you can just stand where you are or you can come to the altar we're saying God I'm ready to see some of my stuff maturing but I heard you say that you're maturing things for the maturing that you're causing things to come together for people who are ready to evolve. And sometimes evolving isn't easy. It comes with the price. It comes with the cost. Getting to this place where you want me. I guess I should have said coming to the altar, anybody desperate. That's, that's who I'm calling to the altar. If you're desperate come to the altar if you just you're, you're, you're working it and you're feeling pretty good you just need to continue then just stand nobody can judge you either way and for somebody that doesn't want to look a certain way I just tell you right now I'm always desperate yes sir yes sir in front of y'all in Florida if y'all not even there every time my bishop calls us to the altar I'm trying to be the first one I'm trying to be the closest one there not that he can touch me just because I want to be that close. I want to feel the breath come out of his mouth. Desperate. Father, we come desperate this afternoon. We come needing a move, a shift. We come today not simply to speak to you, but we've come today to hear from you. God, we, we like Ezekiel and possibly not in the natural as bad as, but in our own way are in uncomfortable conditions, mentally, emotionally, physically. Some of us look so wonderful on the outside. Our smile brightens the room. Our personalities light up the city. But on the inside, God, we're crying and we're broken and we need you. God, some of us come and never have to worry about a bill. Everything's always paid, paid on time. We're able to help others and just do what we need to do. Houses are fine. Clothes are fine. Food in the cabinet, cabinets. Nothing lacking. But yet, for some reason, we can't find the price of joy or peace on sale anywhere. And we need you. God, some of us are, are, are after you. We, we love you. We're, things are okay. We're, we're reading. We're worshiping. We're praying. We're, 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 we're serving. But we're also scrambling. We don't know what the will of God is for our lives. We can't find purpose. In all of our performance, we've lost purpose. We don't even know what we're here for. And we're becoming frustrated and worn out doing right. 
And so, God, for all of us and wherever we fit in, we come desperate this afternoon. We, we come needing you to breathe it into existence. We come needing that prophetic word to be real. We come needing Bishop McGuire to have heard you for real this morning, that you were about to speak back to us. And so, God, in your still small voice, in the thunder and the lightning, by a Nathanic prophecy, by some prophetic unction, by just the move of your spirit in a song, something written, something we said, something we remember, speak to us today. Speak to us, Lord. We need you. We can't go anywhere without your proceeding word. We can't proceed without a word from your mouth. God, we'll continue to do what we heard, but we need to become acute and sensitive to what we're hearing, what you're saying. We know what you said, but what are you saying in this season? We don't want to miss our season. We don't want to miss our shift doing what you said and not what you're saying. Help us to hear you clearly. We're not chasing people. We're not chasing dreams. We're chasing you. Whatever you give us, whatever you allow us to enjoy along the way, we say yes to it. God, even today, we empty ourselves of our own personal expectations as best we can. And we're asking you to fill us with what we should expect from you, from what you're expecting out of us. Fill us, God, with what you want us to have. Give us the desires of our heart. You cause us to desire the right thing as we delight ourselves in you. Some of the stuff that we want would kill us. Some of the people that we want around would ruin us. So we don't want what we want. We want what you want. Reveal it to us. Let us be as it were that we're by the river Kabar. Help us with it unity and help us with forgiveness and help us with love and help us with helping to fight each other's enemies help us to be positioned correctly thank you for your presence favor increase and protection that perfect combination we love you sir and God we receive it we receive it immediately we receive it fully we hear it and God we're going to walk in this new revelation we're going to walk with a new swag we're going to walk with a new vengeance we're going to walk with new vigor we're going to walk with a greater level of expectation we're going to walk like we belong to you humble in our spirit but bold in our confidence because of our redeemer we love you sir and we honor you God I pray now that healing would be released right now from the south side of this sanctuary that God, every person in this room would be able to just reach out and touch the hem of your garment. That they could prophetically see you in the midst of the dusty road of their lives. And that God, that they would reach out right now and just touch. You didn't even say that she grabbed it. You didn't even say that she tugged on it. You just said that she touched what was dragging in the dirt. Something left behind by you enough to bring virtue into our lives heal in this place today heal physically God that we might see your manifestation heal mentally and emotionally that people might be propped up heal financially God that our lives would be changed that we might be the givers and the beneficiaries of your goodness God that we might help others that we would cause a flow and an overflow into the lives of other people want us help us to want to be a blessing to someone else release your covenant blessing upon us today we thank you for your instruction and correction sir and as Jabez prayed protect us with your hand and keep us from causing any pain we love you we honor you and we celebrate you in Jesus name amen come on and just celebrate God come on celebrating for your healing come on celebrating for your restoration come on He's restoring you. He's blessing you. He's replenishing you. Come on, tell somebody you'll never be the same. Prophesy to somebody. Tell them you'll never be the same. Come on, say it so they can hear it.
Come on, it ought to be a, it ought to be mum, some mumbling, some some grumbling in this place. It ought to be some words being said. Come on, I'm gonna give you another instruction. Find three people and tell them you'll never be the same, and say it out loud. You'll never be the same. Come on, encourage one another, and it'll bless you. Come on, put your hands together one more time for the Lord, for the word of God. Come on, bless the Lord for the word of God today. You prefer to prosper in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. It's giving time. Amen. It's giving time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to ask that you would follow the instructions of the ushers and our greeters. Amen. As they prepare to give unto the Lord. Amen. We ask that you just give your best seed. Amen. Elder uh, Bass, can you bring um, the basket for Bishop? If you feel led in your spirit, amen, in your heart this morning to, to be a blessing to the man of God, we want to invite you, amen, to place your seed here in the bucket for our bishop. Uh, we thank God for him. We thank God for how he uses him, how he pours into his life to impact our lives. Amen. We thank God for the word of God in his belly. Amen. Come on, put your hands together one more time for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's give unto the Lord.
Amen. Just be reminded, amen, today, as you go forth this afternoon, that the favor of God, the increase of God, and the protection of God is upon your life. Amen. We thank God for you. We thank you for joining us here at the Potter's House Dayton International Ministries. And perhaps there's one here tonight, this afternoon, who, who does not know Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen. But you want to make Jesus Christ your choice. We want to give you this opportunity, amen, to come to this altar. Amen. And allow the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life and to be Lord of your life. If that's you, if you're here, we want to invite you to come. Amen. In Jesus' name. This is your time. Amen. To give Christ your life. Hallelujah. Amen. We take that to believe that everyone in the house is saved. Amen. And washed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Put your hands together. Amen. We all are saints in the Christ in the house of God. Perhaps there's one here this morning. You don't have a church home, amen, but you're looking for a place that you can call home. We want to invite you, amen, to make the Potter's House Dayton International Ministries your church family. If you're here this morning, we want to invite you to come, amen. We want to accept you as one of our brothers and sisters in the Lord, our families in the Lord of Christ here at the Potter's House Dayton. If that's you, will not you come meet me here at the altar, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Everybody's covered in the name of the Lord. All hearts cleared. All minds cleared. And we're going to ask you to stand with us if you're able to stand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank God for you. We, we bless the Lord for you that you've come to be with us on this, this holy day of the Lord. Our life wouldn't be the same without you. Amen. We thank you. We love you. We thank God for you. On behalf of our dear bishop, we want you to know we love you. We always welcome you to the house of God here at the Potter's House Dayton International Ministries. Let us pray. Father, we're so thankful. We're so honored, Lord God, because you are great and you're greatly to be praised. Father, each family represented in this house to stay, those watching by Ustream and over the internet, Father, we pray the peace of God will rest, rule, and abide upon every household, that your love will fill their hearts, Lord God, and that every need that they have, Lord God, will be provided through Christ Jesus, our Lord. We honor you, sir. We, are, we love you. We bless you. Have your way in our life until we're able to meet again. The people of God, say it. God has spoken, so let the Bless you. We love you in Jesus' name.